Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to Not Perfect Zen. I hope you're doing well. Um, I tried to do a video a few days ago, and it just didn't work out, and um, I was having a hard time deciding on something to do, and um, so I got to looking at tiles that I did in my first year when I first found Zentangle, and I came upon this one, but I couldn't remember the name of the pattern, so it took me a while to search for it and find it, and it is called Flotus by Laura Williams, and she's a CZT, and then on the inside of this, is a pattern called Current by Zentangle. And it's one that I think is only published for CZT. So I can teach it, but you just won't find official step outs for it out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, um, I thought I would show you some things that I enjoyed when I was just looking for things that were simple, easy to do, but kept my focus. And this tile definitely will do that. Um, this is my four by four and a half inch paper that I cut for my disc bound system. And um, I got a Zentangle tile and just drew around the outside of it just to, to make it different because I want to have a definite outline like you see. Uh, I want to have a border, but I don't necessarily want to go all the way to the edge on this one. So three and a half inch size. And uh, I'm going to be using a Micron 01 and possibly a Micron 08 if I decide to add some drama like you see on this one. Um, I like that the CZT who did this pattern, Laura Williams, she said that um, she had seen it in a Mahjong game. And uh, I've been doing a little bit of Mahjong lately just to, for quiet and, uh, for the challenge. Anyway, I'm going to start by just showing you how to do this. And um, I'll try to remember to leave a link to the step outs, but it's a fairly easy pattern to do. So we're going to start with a like a half moon, just a half circle. And then we're going to put an aura around that and mine are never even <laughs> that's okay um the other two things that we're going to use well three actually it's possibly the eraser um graphite pencil and a blending stump what i like to do is i find that if i don't give myself a little bit of a guide i go all crazy with the length on my petals. So I'm just kind of putting a semicircle, very light line, call it a string if you want. And so the first step on this for Flotus is we're going to go up. I'm going to go to that line and then I'm going to make a point, come back down, and then back down to that aura. <clears throat> so from here on, all we have to do is come off that tip, come back down when I get to that line, and come back down. So these are pretty easy to do. And I just like that this line helps me uh, with my perfectionism is the <laughs> easiest thing to call it. Now 
that I was practicing this after I found it and I didn't like how mine were looking. So there. Okay. Now we're going to go back in this direction, doing the same thing. We're just going to come up, make our little V, come back down, go to the center. We're just going in the opposite direction. You could make these a little bit wider if you wanted to. I'm trying to make them about the same size. Okay, so basically that's it. I'm going to remove that eraser line because it bothers me. <laughs> See it there? All right, so there's our first one. Um, as far as down here in the bottom, uh, one of the things that she does is just some light lines going down. And I'm not trying to be real straight, just a little bit of a wiggle in them. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so let's do another one. I'm going to come, uh, let's say about right here, I guess. So we're going to start the same way, put our semicircle. Another one. Give myself just a quick guide how I want that to go. I think that looks good. And I'm going to start in the middle. And this time I'm going to do a little bit of a different tip. Okay, so you're doing the same thing. We're gonna start from here. Do a little bit different point. Put that down. So we're just doing a tangulation. When I was a kid, I really enjoyed drawing flowers like this. So I enjoy this pattern. <clears throat> there we can go behind this one. I guess it is going to come down about here. I don't think we're going to see the top of that one. And this one's going to come like that. Go up. Okay. There's our second one. And Let's just try a big one coming off of this corner. Okay. Going to get my pencil. Oh, this one came out pretty good size. Okay, I think that's probably better. <clears throat> so I'm going to start here at the bottom.
This one I had a little bit of a curve. Yeah, again. Trying to remember to make these a little bit wider <laughs> since this one's bigger. So just another reminder to have fun with it and make it your own art. I am still um, intimidated by what I see such fantastic work from other artists. And uh, even though I say don't compare, it's hard not to. And that's why I thought, well, I'll go back to the ones that I really enjoyed in the beginning. And uh, I know I liked this one. Okay. So um, I'm going to erase my mark. And what I want to show you now is this pattern in the center. It's a, to me, a very meditative and interesting pattern. It's called Current and it's by Zentangle. And uh, basically, oh, here, I forgot to show you my card. So it's C O U. R A N T. And then this one is Flotus, the first one that we did by Lara Williams. But with current, you just start by making, of course, that was kind of an odd shape, but let's just kind of cut these off in different ways. Okay, so you could have just a very odd string. And then you just start on the outside and aura, and then just keep coming in. And this is the kind of thing I like to do. These patterns are very good for focus. Uh, when I'm listening to an audiobook, I don't have to think much about it. I just follow it. Keep going in, doing the R. Okay, so that's basically all there is to current. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do that in here. I think I'm going to go ahead and add an aura first. So I have been doing a challenge. It's called Tangle 365. And um, they have prompts for, will have prompts for every day for each month of 2022. So Today is the 23rd, so I've kept up with it for 23 days already. But I'm not doing videos for them.
I didn't aura the other one, so I'm <clears throat> interested to see how this will look, having the aura first. Okay, so let's just start in the center and add a couple of lines. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put a line around that one to make a small aura inside of that one. And then just take your time. And if you're watching me and I start to put you to sleep, <laughs> then you can. Speed it up. But this, like I said, is a very good pattern for focus. I've been looking at um, possibly doing a bullet journal, and the guy who started doing bullet journals was talking about how he was doing much better in school when he was allowed to doodle he could actually listen to the teacher better and i've heard that many times from people who do zentangle <clears throat> excuse me let's do yes this. That should be interesting. You could just <laughs> do this however you want. That was a weird one. Okay. This one's going to look like a lemon. And you just keep going toward the center. I'm going to make a small one here. Come that way. Oops, sorry about that. And I'm going a little bit faster than I normally would. If I were doing this as like a morning meditation. Sometimes I go clockwise. Sometimes I go counterclockwise. I think I'm going to do one more on this side. And then we're going to 
finish the flowers because I didn't show everything that goes on each one of those. Okay. So um, in each one of these flowers, the other thing that she does in the pattern is add a line that just kind of goes up in the center of each petal. We could do little dots if we wanted to. The other thing that she does is little lines. Okay. We could do stippling. <laughs> I'm having a hard time remembering that one. Where you just put little dots. Make them maybe a little bit thicker towards the top. If you don't have a graphite pencil, if you're ever out and just doing art while you're waiting somewhere, you can use your pen just like that to add some shading. Okay. Um, for this one, let's add some little orbs inside here. Okay. So there we have it. The next is going to be shading. And the other thing that I wanted to do was to add this. Um, I don't know if I have a brush pen. I did at one point. No. Um, but this is a Micron 08, and it's pretty thick. So let me see if I can. Fill it in. If not, I may have to go get a different pen. I do enjoy the brush pens, but I've had mine for so long, I think it has dried up. If you have a um, watercolor brush, you can do that. I really should be going in little tiny circles. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for just a second. And go get a different pen. Okay, I'm back and I have picked up out of my supplies a brush pen, which has a brush tip and then there's also a graphic one, which has a little bit stronger tip like that, and fatter. And so um, let me start with the graphic one. And feel free to fast forward through this. But I want you to see the drama that you get by having the black. And I may end up putting this in one of these just for drama also. When I first started doing Zentangle, I didn't like 
filling in big areas. And I probably don't do it <laughs> exactly right. Because ideally you don't want to see lines. And I can see the lines on mine. Um, I'm going to switch to the brush pen. We'll see what kind of difference that makes. It's been a while since I used a brush pen. And see the brush pen can do a much wider area and you're less likely to have to keep rubbing over the paper again and again because it begins to damage it. At least it was this paper. This is not um, the Fabriano paper that's on the regular Centennial tile. And I might come back after this has dried and fill in some of those spots. So let's go ahead and get this done. A brush pen definitely helps in these large areas. I don't remember if Zentangle has included brush pins on a project pack before or not. It would be interesting to know. If you've never done the earlier Zentangle project packs, they're just packed full of great information. Every project pack is, of course. And you don't have to buy the supplies to benefit from watching the videos. I just love listening to Rick and Maria and Molly and Martha and um, Julie. Okay, so I will go over this. Again, before I put my picture on social media, um, the last thing I want to do, actually, I'm going to put the black here. I'm going to go over that. <clears throat> kind of balance out that drama. And then I'm going to come back with my Micron 01 and put the lines like I had there before on that other one. Okay, so now for shading. I'm going to start where the petals meet the center of the flower. And I'm just lightly adding the graphite. And I'm trying to keep my hand off of this because it's going to be wet for a while. I have messed up many a tile by not remembering that. So now I have my blending stump and I'm just lightly Touch in the paper in circular motion to smooth that out towards the center. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, oh, this is another part that I want to be black. Um, so, here, and 
think I need to put my whoops. I want to put my um, arm. And okay, just go like this. So we're matching what's on that side. And then we'll just put the black on this corner. So wherever you ended up with the space here on the edge, just fill it in. Or you could continue with that pattern or any other pattern that you would like to put in the center. I'm not sure what paper this is, but it doesn't like this graphic one. It's kind of pulling up the top layer of the paper. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so back to adding our shading. So I'm going to go along the edge of this. And then just slightly spread it out. Okay. And the same thing on this one. And I'm going to add some, a little bit heavier graphite here. And then I'm going to pull it down towards the center, leaving it white in the corner. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is all along here. We're going to add graphite just where we left this far. And I'm doing it kind of heavy, not too bad, <clears throat> but I do want it to show up and set our flowers apart from the pattern in the center. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit along here. I didn't add shading on the first one, so we're gonna see how it turns out.
Ended up doing that one too light. And then, um, ending stone. And I'm going to put a little bit darker along here. And here. All right. So now let's soften down. Pull it toward the center, and that's going to make that kind of drop down. Make it look like the flowers are up above. You can always go back and put more graphite if you wanted. And then with what's still on my blending stump, I'm going to put just a little bit of graphite in the center of these. All right. That's different. <laughs> Not exactly the way the first one was, but close. Like I say, you can play with it. Um, I want to show you one that I did last night. This is on a Phi tile that I had already colored. And I put Diva Dance in the middle. And I came back with my graphic one and did you know, a little bit darker for the petals on each of these. I enjoyed that. So uh, I hope you liked that. I enjoyed going back and looking through some of my older tiles, and uh, that one was fun. Okay, I just want to show you that I think some of this, like right here, was still wet, and I got it on my finger and I got it on the tile. So what I might do, excuse my reach, is I could come back with like a jelly roll and go over that just a little bit because that's not what I wanted on the petal. So that's one way to do a little fix. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I'm going to go through my older tiles and see if there's anything else that I could show you that uh, would be enjoyable. Thanks for, for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.